All right, welcome back to another outlying fell walk. And today we're combining two walks into one. So guests again, Mr. Dave Hewitt, oh. well done. And yeah, a total of nine fells today, split over two walks. Two relatively easy walks. Um, but yeah, first we're doing the Eastern South Coniston Fells. Um, starting with the top of cell side, High Light Haw, Low Light Haw, and this is the final one just up here of Brock Barrow before we retrace our steps onto the west side of the lake and pick up five more across there. Wool Knot, Tottlebank Heights, Blawith Knot, Eubank and Beacon Fell. So I, one walk supposed to be two and a bit hours and the other walk's supposed to be four and a bit hours but we'll see how that goes it's a very warm day I feel it already first time of the year shorts are on a lot of morning dew getting wet feet actually <laughs> walking through this field but it's supposed to be the hottest day of the year so far which I but anyway we're just on the uh, east bank of this lake running into Coniston water I'm going to find a good track up to the first one of the day, top of cell side. Let's go. Right, so we're on the road on the east side of the lake here. And after this walk, like I say, this ridge that we're doing, we're gonna be going over to these fells over here. And I think I can see the majority of them. I'm pretty sure there's Wool Knot, Tottlebank Heights, Blair with Fell. This must be, uh, Beacon fell over here and I think Eubank is behind it so they look bigger than 200 odd meters from this vantage point I mean this one here it's only 223 but it looks absolutely massive so it must be a scramble route up here <laughs> some uh, lads on some speed bikes scramble bikes oh, what a lovely area never been here before that's what I hope to achieve from these outlying fells. Not only the ticking off the hills and seeing the views, but just new areas. I'm 40 year old and I've never been South Coniston before. <laughs> Drove through South Cumbria once or twice, but nah, this is stunning. <sighs> Beautiful. All right, so we're thinking this is the path up to the top of the first one along the ridge. And if all goes to plan, that's the path back down Dave's just saying that it's potentially a rough steep descent from the fourth one along this ridge but uh, this path up to the first one is pretty good and I thought it'd be better or easier to get our bearings from the top of the highest one and then work it out from there but like I say we all we both have maps we've both got sat navs GPX as usual which I urge you to get Right, I think we can just about see the whole ridge from this opening. We've done quite a lot of ascent already, just in a day of there. So I expect this path to level off because we've still got another mile or so along it. And that's the first for the day, top of cell side. Then, I'm guessing here, but it looks plausible. That must be high light haw, low light haw. And I think Brock Barrow is behind that ridge there, or that one there. So yeah, it's plausible. All right, it looks like a nice gentle walk now. All the way to the point where it does cut off right. It is a defined path. Straight to the top of cell side, 300 odd meters, I believe it is. So all right, let's put some miles in. Just seen today there, looking over to the Coniston Fells, the old man of Coniston and, uh, and Dow Crag. And I'm saying, how the hell did we ever climb them? <laughs> because it's so bloody blown here. But anyway, if you're interested, uh, my channel logo, or the profile picture for this channel um, if you're wondering where that is taken it's actually on Dow Crag just there uh, yeah got a perfect sunset beautiful day the Coniston Fells really need to get back over to them it's fantastic, fantastic walk but I, the focus has switched to these outliers for now I'm guessing that must be Buck Pike a little pyramid or Brown Pike beautiful Oh dear, bombing head. Hang on. Oh, 
And there we go. 50 minutes into the walk, and this is what you get. Wow. A massive stretch of Conison. Just saying to Conison, old man, it looks a bit dull from this side. Very distinctive. I get why it's popular, but it's got better, more flattering angles. <laughs> but anyway, I just noticed Dave's got a bloody wool yet on. I think he's taking it off in a moment. I'm bloody sweating. I might have to take this jacket off shortly. But aye, a few bluebells here. Not as much as on Ranadale Knots as I've seen on many people's pictures lately. I know Tracy Attrell's a big fan of them, Essex girl in the wild. Let's check her channel out. Lovely, melancholic music and uh, very high level information about where you are. So aye, check her out. But anyway, this is where we are today. No I near, near Ranadale, pretty much the opposite end to it. <laughs> the southern lakes. It's gonna be busy down there today. We were supposed to do this walk last week in fact. Um uh, dear, but I get up every morning before I set off. I think it was 5 a.m. And I go to a site that has all webcams around the lake district and I'm gonna tell you about this because it's very useful and it's saved me a lot of hassle there's one in coniston langdale all the major dales borrowdale wasdale skidder grisdale and you can check the weather before you come so when i checked the camera for coniston last saturday morning the water the clag was down to water level now these fells aren't very big 200 or 300 meters most of them but there's no point spoiling a lovely amble we wouldn't have seen any of this lake if we came last week so i sometimes it's worth just to postpone and retry no rush it's always going to be here and the weather will improve That was refreshing. Look in there, there's a nice little pitch there. <laughs> Couple oh, yeah. of tents on there. Water sauce, plunge pool. Ah, it's opened up quite nicely there. You can just about see the lake. Expected to be able to see it all the way along here, but uh, lovely. Still looking over to the old man there. And back south, they're not for today, but there's a few more outliers down there. There's a few distinct nodes. I think there's Black Coombe. You might not we'll be able to see it on here. And there's a set over there as well, quite a number. A few little ones over here. We'll all get them, we'll get them all. Ollie and Dave. What to do? Five so far, 111 to go. Hopefully, 102 after this round. That'll be so these I'm trying to do the ones furthest from home first. I'll leave the northern ones so I've got something for a rainy day in the winter possibly. <laughs> we do I get a couple of camps in but I Oh I'm loving this. I'm feeling the scent today. Well that's just because of the heat. I have to take the jacket off. <laughs> I don't like taking the jacket off, it makes me feel secure, safe. Shorts and t-shirt weather. Sadly needs sun cream, bit of a mistake I think, but uh, we'll see how we go, hope we don't get too badly burned. Right, so we're cutting off right up here soon and then right down here. Right, so we've just left the track down there, there is a, a very distinct path. It's going in the right direction. I don't think there's too much more ascent because that track's done most of it. It continues down there. And I would, I'm would i going to assume it probably goes all the way to Coniston at a relatively low level. So it'd be a nice walk, that. But anyway, top of cell side, directly ahead. Right, just making the final approach now. 
the top of cell side. It's a multitude of paths. It's a rolling green hill like I keep describing about these outliers. Just pick your own way really. Whichever's most comfortable for you. Wow. Absolutely stunning. Right, here we are, just approaching the summit of Top of Cellside. Right, here we are, on top of the first outline fell of the day, Top of Cellside. Absolutely fantastic, we'll take it. Now, we can't be sure which the summit is. There is a huge cairn over there, but on Dave's map it says there's a point over here, so I guess this is the viewpoint anyway, looking right down to the north, I think, up there. Anyway, nice open vista. Right, 335 metres. I think that's the biggest for the day, actually. I'm looking around and I can't see anything higher that we're going to be going up today. Right, so we're just heading down top of cell side and we're trying to do a bit of navigation because this one over here looks like it's uh, fairly distinct and should be one, but it isn't. That's Arnsbarrow Hill, I believe, over here. And Highlight Hall is in this direction. Right, so yeah, that's top of cell side just up there that we're descending. There isn't much of paths up here. And Dave's saying he couldn't find much of one. There are on the OS maps and things like that. It doesn't look like they're very <laughs> well used. So, yeah. I'm just up high to see if I can see an easier one. I mean, you can't hurt yourself up here. There's, it's just grass everywhere. They're not too steep and things like that. But, yeah, this direction we're going. So, that mound there, that must be highlight hall. Low light is very close to it, just behind, and Brock Barrow. So, I uh, should be pointing that direction. I think I need to go and rejoin Dave because I'm now in the way of pass down here. Hope this video clears it up for you. So, when you get here, if you want to come and do these, um, you've got a bit of a heads up. But uh, I'm always confident. I'm never lost, really. But soon, while I've got that on my wrist. Don't stray too far from the line, you'll get in the place you're going. So this isn't easy, <laughs> it's just bushwhacking really. There is no path, the only paths, whatever the sheep have decided to give you over the years, can't be very well trodden. By humans, so there can't be many people who've done these outlying fells. Dave's trying to find the most <laughs> suitable path and I'm just making a straight line <laughs> up and down over bushes and probably getting ticks and all sorts. I would hate to be up here in Clag. Good job we didn't come last week. But uh, hi. Still not 100% sure which the hill is. Dave thinks it's that. I think it's that highlight hole. It's not that. But I, <laughs> when in doubt, make a beeline for it. Oh God, it's gorgeous. I might have to just, oh bloody hell. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm showing my inexperience. This week, but you can't learn without doing it. So, oh, hi, oh dear. Right, so I think we've correctly identified this as being highlight hall. Now, I'm a bit of a shame we haven't gone over those hills because I bet the bloody burkets, and I'm gonna have to come back here <laughs> and do this tricky path again. But anyway, not for this round. I'll speak to Andrew Foster. The other day, and he's encouraging me to do all the burkets, and I kind of don't respect them, to be fair. There's four on top of Skiddaw. 
and I said to him, if Bill Burkett was on top of Skidder, there somebody had a massive shite, there'd have been a fifth. So, I, I was, a lot of them are just too small and insignificant, but there are a lot of good ones, I'll give him that, so. And I said to him, I don't know why I'm fighting it, because I'm probably going to do them at some point. Just four on top of Skidder. There's Jan, the summit. All right, so I we just found a nice little Christmas tree here. Bit early, but yeah. Dave just saying it's very healthy. Still growing away there. I'll come back and cut it down in December. But I just up here now, somewhere there must be a cairn or something. It's featureless. That's where we've came from. That hasn't been pleasant. But I think we can see some distinct paths beyond this one, so hopefully it'll improve. Oh, I just seen it, Dave. I'll not remember this hill in future, but then again, it's uh, these are the ones you remember. You remember because the, the struggle to get to them. <laughs> so I highlight. Oh, I think it must just be up here. Yeah, there's a cairn. A cairn. And I'm having that as a summit. Right, here we are, on top of the second outlier of the day of nine, Highlight Hall. I hope this video ain't going to get taken down, because I'm saying a particular word too often. So I apologise to YouTube in advance if it is, but yeah. It looks like low light is over here. I can see a cairn on it actually. And then Brock Barrow after that, before we go back across the lake. Pick up them yans over there. That's it, that's just us leaving Highlight Hall after a 10 minute pit stop. Short walk over to low light now. The much trouble and the path looks much better than it has been. It's kind of engraved here. I can even see some tire tracks. I'm presuming farmers been up here with this quad bike at some stage. But, uh, beautiful. That's a, that's a lovely little hill. You know what? You, you walk over to them, you think, why is Wayne Wright chosen this as a hill? You get there, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> never question him. Never question him, just do as he asks. And here we are, third outlier of the day, low light hall. Fantastic, yes. Oh, I take it, boom. And yes, we can see the fourth one from here. Uh, Brock Barrow, there is actually, it looks like a trig on it, even. So, I waiting for Dave to catch up. Filming me as I film him. Wow. Spectacular views here. Well done, Dave. Fish one this time. Boom. Right. Just catch our breath. A couple of minutes, it won't take long. And it's just a short descent and a short reascent. That's what I like about these fells. Right, I could have sworn I saw a cairn up here earlier. But now, that's not it. It was a cairn. Oh, yeah, that's a cairn I saw right at the very end earlier. But I'm gonna. Oh! No, it's there, yeah. Ignore me. I'm blaming massively on there. East Coniston outlying fells done. On to the west. So here it is, the viewpoint from Brock Barrow. It must be a very steep descent because we're not far from the track down there. We're still fairly high to be fair. I think it's only 200 odd meters, but uh, I think we can just about see where we're parked. Only somewhere. Oh, there it is. I can see 
car park. Looks chock a block now. Right, back down to the lake level and then straight up. And like I said, I'm not going to point at them, but wool knot is the next stop for number five for the day. So I should gather our breath and continue on. That's it. Just descending Brock Barrow now. Not sure. It is a faint path, it's hard to spot. Can't be doing that way because that's too steep. I think Dave's got right idea. I think he's curving around the ridge. I thought there might be a shortcut down here, but I was mistaken. Right. Punishment, it's way too steep all the way around. So you do have to walk kind of, follow the actual path. And I can see it down there. Dave's already found it, I think. I've just cost myself some more ascent for the mistake. Right, so that's just us back down, just about to lake level. So I'll bring you back when we're about to ascend the western side of the South Coniston Fells. Right, so that's just back to road level now. Pretty much the start of the first walk that we did. The second walk? Yep. Straight over and up them little fells there. Five more to go. We've had a can of coke from the ice cream van. Two pun each. <laughs> Worth every penny though, because we're in low and liquid. Let's give it an energy boost. Right, so we've just crossed the road there over onto the western side of the South Coniston Fells. And we're following this obvious track up to hopefully the first of the day of Wool Knot, so the fifth of the day, first of this western side. Right, so we're just sitting here sweating, praying for a beck or a river to dunk our heads in and Dave looks to the left and uh, <laughs> the Lord provides a tap in the wall. He's enjoying himself. He was just about passed out there two minutes ago, and now he's happy. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> and we'll crack on. Yes. Feel better? That's better. Aye. So yeah, we've just met the lady who installed this tap as a gratitude for all the walkers. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Here we are, at the end of the road. No park in here, sign posted. But yeah, blah with common. Um, public foot path this way, all the way up to first of the day, Wool Knot, and then Total Bank Heights, and then Blawith Fell itself, before Eubank and Beacon Fell. We might have a loud dip in the tarn. The lady there said it might be like Butlins today, so <laughs> we'll see. I've seen nobody on these paths yet, apart from on the main road, there's a Keswick to Ulverston road race or something like that, I believe. So, aye. Very busy, all sorts of ages doing it. Interesting. But, aye. Me and Dave are fell men. We don't do low level walks. We're both struggling a bit. This heat's just really, the energy's happening. So, found a tree here. We're gonna have another 10 minutes under that. Still early, still just quarter to 12. But once we get to the top of this first one, wool knot, they're all around the, the same height, these fells. So most of the ascent will be done. And that's the hard part in weather like this. Just saps you. Right, so we just came up this hill, but we've needlessly done that. We should have took the lower path round it joins on there and then this is walnut that we're going up and then over to Tottlebank height and I think it's Blawith Fell just over there um, this must be Beacon Fell number five and the town should be around here somewhere but I can't quite see I can hear running water but uh, hi. looks like we're coming back onto a good path right here we are at Beacon Town Dave's feeling the heat unfortunately so I think he's gonna Head back towards the car. There's still seven miles left from here, so it's a tough one. But I think I'm going to be going up here to Woolnut 
and then pick up the other four still seven miles not a lot more ascent but uh, uh, I think Dave's just going to call it a day so thanks for coming Dave appreciate it hope you get home safe it's bloody hot though I'm going to have to ration my water from here thanks to that tap I've got a fresh supply but uh, I really hope you will not So I just working our way up Walnut, nearly at the top, not much more to go really. But I found uh, Beacon Fell, it must be that one there. I expected it to be over here somewhere, I don't know. Aye, and this that's the last for the day, number number nine or five for this western side. Aye. Bloody hot. I think Dave's gonna have himself a swim. <laughs> it's like Butlin's down there. Right, here we are, just approaching, what are we on, the fifth outlying Wainwright of the day, of Walnut. Oh, we bag it, we'll take it, thank you. Boom, oh yes, what can I see from here? Oh, pretty much the rest of the route I would say. So I, old Beacon Town down there. But Dave's in his speedos just now, I think. Hope he's keeping away from them women. All right, right. From here, Total Bank Height, which is this one here. Blah with Fell, and we're going to follow this ridge down behind this mound here, I believe. And it's uh, U Bank over there. And then we're going to follow around to Beacon Fell. Hi, they're an, an interesting set, these outlying fells. From a distance, they look quite massive, I mean, on top of Walnut there, looking over to this one here, I mean, they are both 250 metres, which isn't to be sniffed at, but the tiddle isn't compared to the central fells, the Lake District, but when you walk up to them, they uh, they look a little bit smaller, to be fair, so <laughs> they look quite intimidating from afar, but yeah, once you get up to them, you realise, nice green grassy path up most of them, and uh, and relatively gradual as well, which is great. And I think the great walks for for anybody, any age. I've actually seen people riding a bike up there. To be fair, I don't know if it was an e-bike or not, but <laughs> yeah, so accessible. Great fun with Dave. He's done what he can. He's, he's tried his best. I mean, he's great in ice cold weather. You've seen him do Helvellyn stride and edge in full snow and ice conditions. Didn't blink an eye, but ah, uh, the heat. We're big lads, uh, so. <laughs> It hits us twice as hard, I would say. I tell you what, these uh, were a bloody godsend today. A lot of water on this route. Oh, oh. oh it's so refreshing. It's bloody needed. Oh, oh yeah. Right, so here we are on the sixth outlying fell of the day of Tottlebank Heights. We'll take it, 250 odd metres. We're looking back over to Walnut, slightly lower it in front, and Beacon Fell, the final one for the day now. Next, we're going over here, Blawith Knot, and then I think Eubank's over there somewhere. It doesn't look that spectacular, but we must pick them up. We must. Them ones over there. There are a couple of outliers, just a couple of short walks from the 
uh, roadside. I suppose you could add, add them on to this walk, but you might kill yourself, especially here in this heat. Oh, hi. So what I have noticed in these uh, outline fells, especially down here in the south, um, I feel a little in the terms of trees or vegetation, you know, it's just barren. I would love a few trees just to, to sit under to block out some of this heat, but there's absolutely nowt. Nowt that has a branch on it that's worth speaking of. I'm still loving it though. I need urge you to give them a try. Maybe even do them before the actual way and right. Give yourself a little start, a little uh, before you have to deal with all that bloody ascent because on a day like this <laughs> that ascent would be a killer and I bet there's some rescue call outs today no doubt no doubt with uh, heat exhaustion I'm pretty sure Dave made the right call there he was uh, he was walking wounded some people will just carry on just thinking oh, I can't, can't let people down or what will people think of me no you have to decide for yourself because other people can't make that call it makes them puts them in an awkward situation you know so if you can't carry on you best stop him turning around getting back to safety now i don't know how hot today is <laughs> sorry i keep going on about how hot it is but uh, pretty much every walk for the last six months has been freezing and rain <laughs> It's maybe only like 15 degrees and I'm just making a meal of it but Right here we are on the seventh summit of the day of Blarwith Knot Thank you very much. They swam. Whew. Oh, hi. Look at this view. Oh, what a fell. Enjoy this one. Looking over to, this is cl probably closest I've ever been to Black Coombe, which is there. I think that's the biggest of all the outlying fells, actually, 600 meters. So, debating whether I'll leave that till the end. Maybe have a bit of a wild camp on it i think there's a group of three over there but yeah there's a number of other ones in this section here um i can't point them out because <laughs> i don't know exactly which ones but what i do know is that's the old man of coniston over there dow crag yeah beautiful you can actually see the wall the sky road i got heart of fell just here and green crag possibly through the middle there and this bumpy ridge here I think there are more outlying fells, which I don't know the names of yet, but we're learning. We've learned nine more on this route, and there is uh, still two to go here. So next is, where are we at? Eubank in that direction, so I'm just wondering if, that's, if it's that pointless little node over there. And then Beacon Fell, which looks quite magnificent from here actually. Right, so we're just heading down Blawith Knot now, and I'll tell you what there is a lot of on these outline fells. This. Just the paths aren't super clear in a lot of areas, but you can always see them kind of in the distance, so there's nothing stopping you just going straight for them, really. But uh, I think my legs are a bit uh, cut to pieces a little bit from all this uh, dead sharp grass yeah me that's some tough walking and the paths are there it switches between bog and north path at all and anywhere i think just over this river here i think eubank is just up there somewhere not too far it's only couple hundred meters I think two or two something like that we a nice little spot here oh yeah I think I'm gonna chill here for 10 minutes take a load off just two fells left to go 
that climb up Beacon Fell is going to be. Above Milk, I think that's the uh, the highest one on this round, and it's the last one, so on the western side, anyway. Anyway, I think I'm going to dip my feet in this uh, in this beck for a few. Oh, this is what it's all about. I've got to stop myself from bombing around all these fells, making a beeline for each summit. Sometimes you just forget where you are, uh, like there's not many times in my life I'll ever be here. This is probably once I'll possibly come back a lot again in later years, because <laughs> there's too many other fells to do. It's only going to be a select few that get a, a second visit. I do like this round, so just in case I'm never back here again, take this opportunity just to sit and enjoy where you are. Look, I've never seen anything like this before. Just Interesting ways the roots have formed there, and uh, we have decent pitching spot. I don't think we're far from the Cumbrian way, actually. Not 100% sure where it is, but uh, oh, great. Let's have a rest for five and then finish these last two. Oh, good lord, that was refreshing. I feel regenerated now. Just sitting there. I think I was there half an hour. <laughs> I didn't want to leave, just feet in the water. Took them out, slowly dry in the sun. Beautiful. Oh, I feel like I can just start another walk now. Oh, wow. So peaceful. And that's a testament to these uh, these roots of the outlying fells, just as anybody on them. Me and Dave this morning didn't meet anybody on the eastern side. And yeah, there's one or two on this side, but they're all going to that beacon tarn for a for a swim. Like I say, it's like Butlins down there. But beyond that, there's a few bikes. I think the Cumbrian Way is near here, so you'll get a few people passing through. But just out in all these outlying paths in between fells, there's, there's absolutely nobody. <laughs> it's marvellous. Just makes you so happy. Forget I forgot about the heat now. So refreshed. Yeah, I urge you, if you ever get a chance to do that, take it. A lot of life in that water as well, a lot of life. I just sat there looking, so clear. There was a little shrimp, little silver fish, like... Oh, madness, every... Every square metre there was about, I don't know, a hundred life forms you could see. I guess that, that means it's, uh... Decent water. Another beautiful little uh, secluded hideaway here, I don't know. Oh, there is knee paths here. I'll show you in a minute once you get to the top of this rise. Oh. God's sake, man. Oh, look at this. Hey. Now I'm. Um, yeah, here, possibly. There's a little stain sort of trod. I think that's what this line on my watch must be referring to. But if you look there, and look there, there's, you can barely see past. There's a few shooting off in all the wrong directions. Just none going directly where I need to go, really. So I think you kind of just got to make your own way. Look out for these trails. Here we are, on top of the eighth outlying fell of the day, Eubank. Oh, what a bloody walk that was. If you're gonna choose to skip a few, skip this one. I mean, this cairn's magnificent, probably one of the best I've ever seen, but good Lord, that's where I came from. All the way over yonder, blah with nut. Largely pathless. Very steep, a lot of descent lost. But anyway, I think there's one more left now. And I'm not sure, it might be that there, which is Beacon Fell. 
somewhere in that direction that one looks promising but god what a tough day all adds up these 200 meter fells eight so far one 300 meter but hey worth it little breeze up here and all oh that's uh that's i'm grateful for that thank you whoever's looking after for me but anyway i'm gonna have a quick cup of here i've got one in my bag i've not desired any all day so <laughs> Just gonna have a quick one here, I've got to need a little bit of a caffeine rush. Right, so I've just left Eubank there heading over to Beacon Fell. I've just been told by a couple of cyclists that this path's awful, but can't be any worse than what I've came up Eubank on that's got to be one of the toughest hills I've done I think not including in Munro's <laughs> in Scotland but uh, I just need to find the path that loses the least amount of ascent now that's my strategy but it looks like there's a few ups and downs on this ridge to beacon fell Ooh. them cyclists weren't lying that is going to be the worst path I've ever been on I'm exaggerating but that was awful I've just came all the way from you bank over there off piece the whole way and I've just spotted this one from over the distance there so yeah this is going in the direction of Beacon Fell I believe so I'm gonna use it bloody hell I can't recommend this walk I don't think to to anybody see I thought the outline fells would be like a nice introduction to the actual way and rides well how they are in some cases more difficult a lot of off-piece work whether you're good with maps or have a navigation device or not the paths are just too sporadic Right, here we are at the end of an epic day which will live long in the memory. Beacon Fell number nine of the outline Wainwrights for today, and I think pretty much from here we can see them all that we've done. So we started this morning, 10 hours ago or so, on the uh, eastern side where you can see Topper Cell side. Um, we've got High Light Hall, Low Light Hall, and Brock Barrow's in there somewhere before we descended back down to road level and came up this side where Dave left us at the tan but uh, continued on to Woolnoth just in the foreground there um, Total Bank Height, Blawith Knot and then the long ascent, pathless, very, very tough so Eubank over there and again pathless all the way to here of Beacon Fell and with that, I'm pleased with myself, but I ain't doing that route again, so I can't advise this. But look at Coniston Water from here. The entire stretch pretty much overshadowed by the old man himself. So I'm just going to have a quick sit here for five minutes. I'm out of water, so I need to get back down to that tap the lady provided at the start of this walk, because uh, I'm going to drink about a litre and fill my bottle up with another litre. <laughs> Right, so I've just done that piece of camera on the summit and I just realised I didn't have my hat. I was like, my hat! I've left it on the path all the way down here. Oh, oh, my hat, my hat, come to me. Oh, 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 there you are. What a buffoon. And can't be the mountain man without his cap. Let's get off this hill. Right, so here we are, just overlooking Beacon Tarn, and it's a, it's a nice, clear, distinct path, would you believe, all the way back to the car from here. So I just thought I'd better wrap up the adventure. 
These have been the South Coniston Fells, east and west. Nine in total today, and I'm thoroughly happy with the day's work. So I just wanted to say thank you all for watching, I appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you back out on the fells very, very soon. Peace.